On this, I'm now joined by Ambassador Tuliameni Kalomo, who is a veteran diplomat and an expert in international diplomacy. Good evening, Ambassador, and thank you for making time. Good evening, uh, Blanche. Well, Ambassador, you have been following the events in Russia, the tension from the onset. What exactly would you pinpoint as the bone of contention, apart from the ones that uh, we have seen and followed through the international media? Uh, no, thank you very much for having me. I think the bone of contention, the root cause of the problem in uh, Ukraine, um, is the independence, mm -hmm. unity, and territorial integrity of Ukraine, mm -hmm. on the one hand. It's two-dimensional. That's one dimension. The second dimension is the security and safety of the Russian Federation. Mm -hmm. You see, Russia has always been bordered on the southwest by Poland and Ukraine. Mm -hmm. And in 1812, Napoleon that is, uh, France, invaded Russia and they fought a very ferocious war mm -hmm. against, this, against Russia. In 1941, Hitler, again using Poland, invaded Russia. Russia, yes. And don't forget about 26 million citizens of the Soviet Union at the time perished in that war. They, and today, if you look at the northern part of Russia, you have Latvia and Estonia, who are members of NATO. The Baltic states. The mm -hmm. Baltic states. And now you have Georgia and Ukraine with aspirations to become members of NATO. So you can understand the trauma of the Russian Federation, of, be, of a feeling of being, being besieged, surrounded. Mm -hmm. being surrounded. And, uh, and therefore, those are two conflicting dimensions to the, the root causes of the conflict in Russia. Now, Ambassador, you've mentioned the security concerns po uh, put forward by the Russian Federation with the historical background that you just uh, explained in detail. Now, on the other hand, Ukraine is saying, even if it is to join NATO or, uh, and become, uh, become an ally, it's also to do with protecting or maintaining its, its uh, sovereignty and at the same time protecting itself. There again is the uh, uh, question of security concern. You see, the Charter of the United Nations pretty much granted that every country should have the right to choose its path of development. Mm -hmm. And pretty much granted that there should be no resort to threat or use of force to resolving differences between and among states. But you see, we live not in the ideal world, but in real world. Mm -hmm. When the Soviet Union collapsed in 1991, there was a meeting in Budapest, Hungary, yes. which determined, number one, that uh, Ukraine should give up nuclear weapons, but Russia should guarantee the independence and territorial integrity of Ukraine. But more importantly for Russia, there would be no eastward move expansion of NATO. Of NATO. <laughs> that agreement was, was shredded to pieces. We have all these countries surrounding Russia being members of NATO. And the, for Russia, that means e existence. Then in uh, 2008, there was a, 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 an agreement between Ukraine and Russia, granted by Britain and the United States, about the security and rights 
of Russian speaking regions of Donetsk and, Luhansk. and the Luhansk. That also was shared to pieces, particularly when this president, but even when the, the previous president uh, was in power. So you, you, have, you can see that the aggressive nature of NATO, the expansion towards the East, the non-respect of agreements signed, mm -hmm. has created a security trauma for the Russians. So now Russia has reacted to what you just termed as a security trauma. But in the end, uh, Ambassador, the NATO allies have announced sanctions against Russia. Do you think that this would be enough? I, I, I don't know. Uh, first of all... Because at the end, the civilians are the ones suffering on the ground. Uh, first of all, ideally, it would be good if Russia and Ukraine, with the support of its allies, would reach a political and diplomatic agreement to ensure that both parties are provided with the necessary guarantees and finding a lasting solution. I know uh, our friends in Finland don't like this, but there has always been a concept called the fin Finlandization. Mm -hmm that you have a neighbor with whom you do not agree psychologically, I mean, um, ideologically, but you have to live with that neighbor. So Finland, while fiercely pro-West, capitalist country, is not, has never been a member of NATO. Mm -hmm. And they observed what they call reasonable neutrality. Reasonable neutrality. So the ideal scenario would be for Ukraine to forego, like it was... Its aspirations to join NATO. Its aspiration to, be, to, be, to join NATO. And for Russia to grandee, to respect the, to, the independence and territorial, territorial integrity of Ukraine. But this cannot be achieved under the, circum, under the, circum under the current of, circumstances of conflict. And the blame game, Ambassador. If one has listened to the address by the Ukrainian President Zelensky last night, where he said his country is still ready to come to the table for diplomatic talks with Russia, then again, uh, the address by President Putin announcing the special military operation was the complete opposite of the address of President Zelensky. So in this case of the blame game between the two countries, what is to be done? I think in Who the end... Who should humble itself first? Uh, Russia is a big country with a very proud history. And it's a big country. Ukraine uh, recognizes that, even if they don't say it. NATO also recognizes that Russia is a big country with a rich and proud history. So they are the ones that should first give the assurance of the independence and territorial integrity of Ukraine. In the meantime, Ukraine must recognize that Russia has legitimate security concerns uh, born out of her own history, but also the behavior and actions of NATO. So would you say NATO is the aggressor here? Uh, perhaps not an aggressor, but they have... Uh, you see, first of all, they, they characterize Russia as, first it was an enemy, uh, but then uh, Russia is now characterized as an adversary. Uh, so Russia has legitimate concerns of uh, being a victim of aggression uh, by NATO countries, mm -hmm. because NATO countries fundamentally do not agree with the path of economic and political uh, development chosen by Russia. Mm -hmm. You know, the Russians are Slavs. Uh, they are not a Judeo-Christian guy. The, 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 the Western countries, led by the United States, want to impose on Russia a system akin to their own... To the West. To their, to their Western system. Now, Ambassador, African countries, various African countries, Namibia included, have spoken out mostly calling for a peaceful solution so where do you think Africa 
should Africa do more in this conflict? There is nothing we can do, but there is a lot we can say. Uh, there is nothing we can do. It's very far Because away. most of these countries have uh, diplomatic relations with yes, the conflicting we can, parties. Yes, we can use our diplomatic relations with, uh, with both Russia and Ukraine, where, where they, they both exist. Uh, we can use the, uh, the United Nations platform. Uh, but in terms of leverage, in terms of uh, real uh, influence, there is not much we can do. But we can use our moral, uh, moral uh, strength as African countries uh, to convince uh, Russia to respect the Charter of the United Nations. Russia is a founding member of the United Nations, mm -hmm. a permanent member of the United Nations. Mm -hmm. But I wanted to say something about the Western countries and Africa. You know, they are asking African countries to join them, and we did join them in the Security Council. I saw a statement by Kenya and the others mm -hmm. in condemning Russia. But the Western countries, particularly Britain and the United States, have no moral standing to condemn aggression and occupation right here in our neighborhood in Mauritania, in, in Mauritius. Also in DRC. In Mauritius. These countries have uprooted the whole population of uh, Diego Garcia uh, in 1965. Uprooted the British before they granted independence to Mauritius, uprooted the whole population of Diego Garcia and implanted the American So that's base. now the native population. Yes, in 1965. By the time Mauritius became independent in 1968, the population of Diego Garcia and uh, Chagos Archipelago Mm -hmm. were all uprooted and dumped into Mauritius. So as a final Up comment. Until nine, uh, 2019, when the International Court of Justice declared that the British uh, claim of sovereignty over Diego Garcia was illegal. Was illegal, But they refused yes. to accept the judgment. So occupation is not good for uh, in Ukraine, it cannot be good for Mauritius. Any, any part of uh, the world that is ambassador. That's the point. Thank you so much for sharing your views on the conflict in Ukraine tonight but at the with end, us. At the end, power should not be the, 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 the determining factor. Uh, we must uphold the principle of uh, peaceful coexistence and uh, observance of the United Nations Charter. All right, then thank you so much, Ambassador. That's a veteran diplomat, Tuliameni Kalomo, expanding on the current conflict in Ukraine. That's now between Ukraine and Russia.